Let's talk about some more advanced examples using the query function and see what the syntax looks like there. So we're going to look at OR, dealing with nulls, and some more aggregations and some more queries of queries. So here I have a very basic little data table with some data for A, B, C, and D with some values. And what I'd like to do is use the query to pull back just A's or B's. So, so we're going to chuck away the C's and the D's. And I could use a filter function or some lookup functions to do this. But what I'd like to do is show you how, how we can do this kind of work with a, with a query function. So we'll start with just the, the very basic query. And we'll just highlight our data set. And then we'll just do a select star because that pulls back everything. And I like to sometimes just start with that to build the queries up very slowly. And you can see that just returns all of our original data. Now, to, to filter data with the query, we use the, the word where. That's the, the SQL language we use for the, the filter. And we're going to say where column A equals delay or column A equals little b. And I use those, the, the little, the single quotations rather there to go around the values that I'm testing for. So when, when column A equals little a or column A equals lowercase b, then return the data. And there it gives me now just the data for, for A and B. So let's have a look at an and condition and also a null condition. So this is, a, this is our new data set now and you can see it has some gaps in it and it has some, some um, bogus data that's, that's crept in there. So this is bad data. And then we also have some missing apartment types. And what I'd like to do is pull out just a list of the, the valid property and sale price items from here. So I can do some, some further analysis on that and do some work. And I'm not messing around getting mistakes caused by these empty rows. So we're going to say query again, and we'll start with a three to B. So we'll just include the whole two columns this time. And that way, if any data gets added, it'll be included. If any new stuff arrives down here, it just gets automatically dealt with by the query. And again, we'll say select star that just returns me both the rows. And this time we'll say, well, I'll just finish that off first. We'll just bring that back. Uh, that gives me everything. Then we'll add our where clause in, which is our filter. And we'll say a is not null. And it's like writing it out in English. It, it really is. We're saying, select everything where column A is not null, which means it's not these blank ones. So let's hit enter and see what happens. And you can see it removes these ones and it removes these two here. These two values have dropped away now and it also drops away anything down here. So we add to that now, we say where A is not null and B is not null. So we want condition on, we want column B to not be null as well. And that should get rid of now these these two header things and these two blanks here. So let's see if that works. And there we go. It does, it does in fact get rid of those two as well. And let's do one last thing and just, just quickly review that the order by clause and we'll just put that in here. And so we'll just sort by the price from a uh, high to low order by B D E S C. And now that means that we're just sorting by the most expensive to the least expensive. So that was using and, and the, the not null is not null. Uh, so that's, that's the second example I want to show you. Now the third example of the more slightly more advanced syntax is this one here. And we have some space shuttle liftoff dates. And what I'd like to do is return a list of all of the dates, all the space shuttle launches after the year 2000, just so I can use those ones. So, Let's do that. So let's just put a header in there. And I'm going to say query A3 to C. So that's all of our data. And again, we'll just start with the select star just to set the, set the table up. Brings back everything. Now, this is an interesting example because now we're working with dates and I want to do some filtering on dates. And there's a special way that we have to deal with dates in the query function, uh, you can't just sort of say greater than and, and just put a date in. You have to use a special a keyword for the date. So we go back into our language here, into the, the query function section. We're going to have a filter, the where, and we're going to say where B. So that's column B, which was this one which had the dates in. 
is greater than. When you put a date into your query function, you need to use the keyword date. So I have to actually explicitly say this is a date coming up. And then the, the, the format of the date has to be year dash month dash day. And let me show you that. And we again, we wrap it in single quotations. So 2000 we want. I want the first month, which is January. And I have to specify that with two digits. So I have to put the zero in front. And then I want the very first day of January as well. So I put another zero one as the first of the month of January and then close that with a single quotation. And then I'm going to hit enter and that will give me then all of the results. So all of the, the shuttle launches after the year 2000. So I have to use that word date, if you remember, and then also the date, it's very important. The date goes into that format of year, 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 month, month, day, day, it has to take that format. Uh, and then the, the query can properly pass that and, and check for anything in column B, any of the dates in column B greater than that. So let's now take a look at the counting the shuttle missions for each shuttle after the year 2000. So we'll aggregate this for the year 2000. So number of missions, and I'll start again with this same query. So we'll just copy that quickly to save some time, put that in here again. And this time what I'd like to do is still have the same filter, but I'm gonna change my where here. I'm gonna start with C, and then we're going to count C. And as I said, it doesn't really matter. I said in my other video on the, the first query function video, it doesn't really matter which column I count provided it doesn't have any nulls in because it'll just count everything in that column. And that's all I want to do is I want to, to count the number of times, the number of rows each of these shuttles turns up on. And then I specify my where clause, which is my, my filter. So I filter the data first before I do the actual grouping. And then I say group by column C. And let's just see what that looks like. And there it's sorted them now into how many, it, it's sorry, it's returned just the shuttles and how they were, how many uh, missions they flew in the post 2000 period. So let's just sort as well. So we'll go order by count C, D, E, S, C. And then finally, let's just also label count C as, and then the way we do that is to say, to use the word label. And then we put the word, we type count C, which is what the column's currently called, but we're going to call it um, total missions. And there that changes it now to say total missions, which looks a bit more, a bit nicer than count C. Okay. So let's take a look at doing a query of a query. And what I mean is we have data that's been aggregated already like this, and I want to perform, run it through the query language again and, and re-aggregate it even further. And so what I'd like to do with this one is to find out what the total number of missions were and then what the average number of missions were per shuttle after the year 2000. So we'll do a query and this is our data set here. And we'd like to say, select the sum of J and then AVG, which is the average of J as well. And then my two measures I'd like to, to return the two aggregations and I have one header row and let's close the parentheses and hit enter. And so it tells me the, the total missions were 39 and the average number of missions per shuttle was, was, was approximately 10. Now what you can do, and this is where it gets really, really um, powerful is I can actually rather than type out, rather than do this in two steps, I can just embed this query here. So if I copy all of that, except for the equals there, so control C and I just drop that into here, then we'll be able to just do this in one step. Now it won't work when I immediately just do this right now, as you'll see. So I'll hit enter and it's not going to work. It's not going to be able to find column J anymore because this, this now we're not using this one here. What we'll do is actually just generating a data set on the fly with this first query. So this is our sub query. This is our outer query. And rather than using, uh, any, any of the column headings anymore. I need to use col one, col two, col three, as you'll see. So, so if you remember J two, so when we create this little table here, J in this instance was the second column of this little mini table that we created. So when I create it on the fly inside of my formula, I need to reference col two now. So let's do col two in here. And I need to do a col two in here as well. And then I hit enter and then it gets me back now my missions, my sum of my missions. And that now is the, the, the nested query. So let me just put in a 
a fresh line there to give us a bit of space. And one last thing I'd like to do just to neaten this up is to just label those, put the proper column labels on. So I'm just going to copy this in here for, for, for quick, for brevity. But I've said label the sum of column two as the total number of missions and the average of column two as the average missions per shuttle after the year 2000. Hit enter and there you, you go. It gives me now those metrics that I was after, but using a query of a query, so a nested query. That's it with queries, folks, for this one. Now I could keep going for another another hour with the query function. It's such a powerful function. That's really all of the main pieces of syntax for it, the main use cases, but you can just get more and more complex, obviously, with the queries that you write with the language that you use. But that's enough, certainly, to get you deep into the query function and, and use it in your analysis to do what you want. So as I said, it's probably the most powerful function in, in Google Sheets, probably the most useful. So if there's one function to learn from this course, then the query function is the one to learn. So thanks for watching folks.